Tom from Cats Cluckers. Um, I'm someone that is just passionate about chicken and also ducks and our turkeys. Uh, look, they've got such an important role to part, play in our lives and I guess there's so many different varieties. I didn't realise when I started out how many different varieties of chickens there are. I grew up with chickens in suburbia, in Myre, in Fremantle, um, and have hence, in the last three, four years, moved out to Oakford, where I've got some space and able to sort of just get carried away with it all. Uh, I guess I'll start with just showing you some of the different varieties of chickens. If you've got any questions, just stop me along the way and happy to try and share some of my knowledge, some of the things that I've learned along the way. Um, I guess we all know our standard breed of chickens, which are commercial girls. I call these my Kmart chickens because they're always ready to go and do what we need them to do, which is basically lay an egg. The information I guess that we don't know about these girls is that because they've been designed to be such good layers, and we'll just bring her out, um, they don't live for very long. They'll only live in a commercial situation for about 14 months before they'll get rid of them. And that's their best, their best laying life. Um, in a free range situation, like Philomena has and myself and anyone else, they'll probably live for about six years. But after about 18 months, their ability to lay will start to, to, to go off a little bit. They'll still lay for you, but not as good as they have in the first few years. They're capable of laying 300 eggs a year. So lots of lovely eggs. Um, they tend to be a little bit more bossy in their nature, but I quite like that. They're also very nosy. <laughs> we'll have a look at him in a moment. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't like them because they have this you know, opinion that they got to pick each other and not be very nice to each other. It's not necessarily true. They are a, a lot more bossy with each other, but that is part of their personality. Um, as you can see, she's not exactly very fussed by me touching her and carrying her. So they are a good place to start if you're wanting to start with chicken and a good addition to your other breeds that don't lay quite as well. <coughs> These girls are pretty well lay all the way through. Sorry, girls. Is that an Isa Brown? It's a High Line. High Line and Isa Brown are the two different varieties of commercial chickens. The Isa Brown um, tends to be a little bit redder in their colour. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the big girl that's just stood up, the Rhode Island Red, is one of the chickens that you'll find that they use in the genetics of your eyes are brown. That's the, one of the breeds that they use. The genetics are highly guarded. The commercial industry does highly, you know, it's like Coca-Cola, you'll never find the recipe. Um, and for good reason. They put a lot of effort into that. Yeah. Can I just ask you something about the highlights in particular? Yeah. When you get a group of them, does one sort of tend to be in that will be with all chickens. Oh, the one will do that? The one will always assume the, the, the head pecking order. And whenever you introduce a new chicken into your yard, they will get picked on sometimes badly. She's quite liking my jewellery at the moment. They like shiny things. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, they tend to be a little bit more bossy than other chickens. That's probably why you notice that more. And does, what, does that one tend to look a bit different? And she can take on more male characteristics. Yeah. yeah. They, they, you'll tend to find if you don't have a rooster, they will become, somebody will become more butch, if you like, yeah. within that group. Yeah. 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 Um, she hasn't actually got a very good tail at the moment. It's still growing, but she's very young. So when you're going to look at chickens and buy chickens as well, something to look out for is um, the size of their comb, because her comb is still quite small. She looks quite young as well and also her legs are very clean and quite often very yellow when they're very young so that's something else to look out for <laughs> but they're real characters so if you're digging a hole they'll be in the hole with you and um, if you're in the garden sitting down she'll come over to see what you've got so how old is she she's about 20 weeks old so she's just starting to lay these guys will start laying anywhere between 18 and 20 weeks of age Whenever you move a chicken to, like if you were to come and buy one of these off me today, if you moved her, it would upset her if she'd started laying. It might take her a week or two weeks to get back into the groove of laying again. Okay. Get back in. Not that she's going to be very happy about that. We'll speak about the old red grandma that's standing here. She's a Rhode Island red. 
She's, she's actually probably about eight to ten years old, I'm not sure. You can see that she looks quite old around her eyes. And she's not going to be quite as happy for me to pick her up. <laughs> see if I can turn her around. You can see her face, she looks quite old. She's earned her stripes, if you like, in the chicken yard. She will be one of the head chickens within her pen. Uh, I don't. I do have interbred pens, but I, my pure breeds have their own areas, and each day they get free ranged onto our block so that they get the best of both worlds. It's a really important part of their diet as well. They go and get to pick their own bugs and slugs and do their pest control around the place. Um, but you'll also see that you know any chicken should have a nice, clean face. Still, their legs should still be very clean. They can get what we call scaly leg mite, uh, where the scales will raise on their legs really really easily cured most people don't know this but you get yourself a cheap version of Vicks vapor up and massage it into their legs it will clean their legs up and get rid of the mite within a very short time if you have a bad case of it you only need to do it a few times um, now she doesn't necessarily like a bigger egg than our commercial friend here she will she, probably she lay Pardon? is she still laying she does still lay but she wouldn't lay these guys up to probably four years of age would be their best laying time, four or five. And then they start to slow down and as they get older they will probably just end up stopping. Mm. <laughs> this is an Australor. Another pure breed that's very popular. Um, popular either because she's very heavy. Hey? No, she's a bit heavy, I'll just leave this out in the moment. Uh, Australorps are uh, come in three different colours. Um, the blue, which she is, black and a splash. The blue and the black are both recognised by the poultry societies, if you like, or their organisations. The splash is sort of a bit of an off-throw of getting the blue and black breeding. They are still Australorps. They're beautiful animals. They're very mild in nature. She tends to be a little bit more bossy in her nature. Still friendly, but a little bit more bossy. They're very, very docile. But any chickens, really, um, if you handle them from a young age, they will become very friendly. And I believe your animals will be the way that you treat them. You spend time with them, effort with them, they're fed well. They'll return that in the way that they treat you as well. Uh, saying that you will always get the odd nutty one. Like people, there's always a nutty one. You'll always get a, a bossy one. They have their own personalities. There's not much you can do about you know, changing that. That is the way they are. Um. Yes, they yep. look because a lot of the pure breeds out there have been um, manipulated by show people, mm -hmm. and in a lot of cases they've interbred other breeds into your pure breeds. So they, their egg colour, feathering colour may not be what their original was. So they can lay anywhere. They should be a brown egg. So it's something more along. Well, these are actually from these girls, but I'll suddenly go along that sort of colour, sort of egg. Don't the white shooks the first cross, do they lay more eggs than all the... The first the cross? Yeah, they used to call them first cross when I grew up. So you're talking about your commercial breed yeah, of chickens? Yeah. Um, well, yes, they've been genetically modified, if you like, yeah. to, to lay that way. What we really need to understand is that although these girls are great because we all want eggs tomorrow, yeah. we're actually forcing all of our pure breeds out. out. Where people aren't bothered with these guys. The other thing is these guys are born, male and female are born a particular colour. Yeah. So males are born yellow or a white colour. Girls are born um, the orangey red, which you will see in here. Yeah. So at birth, in the commercial places, they euthanised immediately. They get rid of them. These guys, you can't tell male or female quite often until they're 10 to 12 weeks old. So unfortunately, because you're not allowed to have roosters in suburbia, there is a risk when you take them, you will end up with a rooster. The bad side of that is that nobody really wants to take on a rooster. <laughs> it's a vicious circle. So, you know, they get sort of forced out. People don't want to take their risk. Um, something that I do is that in, 
if you end up with a rooster, we'll try and rehome it for you. But reality is, there are too many roosters, not enough homes. You can bring roosters back to me. However, they may end up processed as well. So that's just something that you have to, to bear in mind. But we need to try and preserve some of these other breeds. And I keep three rare breeds, which I don't have with me today. Uh, well Summers, and he's well known for being the Kellogg's Corn Flake Rooster. Um, double lace Barnevelders, they're a Dutch chicken and a French salmon faverolles. And they, they've sort of got beards and earmuffs and feathered feet. They look a bit unusual. But, I mean, and there's several other rare breeds out there as well, but that's because we're wanting to lean towards having this sort of chicken. As far as having chickens to process everything in your kitchen, fantastic. You do not need to put anything into the bin. I personally, and some people will tell you not to feed them um, onion skins and potatoes and green potatoes. Yes, don't, don't give them that. Raw meat, they're not keen on raw meat, but anything else that you have, if they don't eat it, they will process it back into the ground. The bugs will come, they will get the bugs. Um, the onion does not hurt them. It's not, in, in fact, I've done quite a bit of reading on, on home remedies and one of them uses chopped up onion in their diet to help them get well if they're feeling a little bit down. So there's lots of stuff that you can do like that. Another thing that I do with my animals is they have garlic in their water constantly. Mm. Garlic is a natural wormer, antibiotic, it gets into their bloodstream, uh, the mites and fleas and ticks, which are inevitably around. You cannot stop them ever 100% being in your yards. Uh, it, it just it helps keep all of that under control. It will not cure anything. It just helps their general health. Um, so do, you, do you just crush the garlic and put it in the water? No, whole cloves. So don't peel it or anything. Just pop the whole clove into their water dish or into the water dishes that I may fill from. After a few weeks, it does make the water go black and your plastic containers go black. I just throw it onto the ground, let it dry out. Um, you know, the chickens peck around it, whatever's on the ground, and you can put it back into the water once it's dried out. So it's just a bit of a, a, a recycling system. You can grow garlic, they'll eat the flowers off the garlic, they'll eat the stems off the garlic. Um, yeah, garlic is, is something that I, I strongly believe is a really important part of their diet. It does not affect the, the flavour of their egg. It doesn't affect the meat. You cannot overdose them. Um, so how many cloves would you put in a container? A whole clove? One whole clove. Yeah. One whole bowl? Or yeah, one a whole clove? bowl. A whole, sorry, a whole bowl. Uh, the other thing that you can do every six months is apple cider vinegar into their water. They do say that it's better to do it on a full moon. That's if you have the time. However, you can pop it in whatever it suits you. If in a container like that, you could probably uh, a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Shh. And what is the purpose of that cup? That's also a natural wormer. Health tonic, if your chickens are feeling a little bit down, particularly over winter, they can get a little bit of a cold or flu. It is common. Um, anyone telling you that they don't get sick chickens is not telling you the truth because like us, they do get colds and flus. They will either survive it or they won't. If they're fully grown chickens like this, they will generally get over it. Uh, but the apple cider vinegar is also a natural wormer, natural health tonic. Um, if they have sore throats, it's soothing for their throat. Um, yeah, it's a general good all-rounder as well. So that, how often did you say to them? Um, if you did it every six months, <laughs> that would be more than enough. And honestly, none of my chickens have chemicals in the way of um, these wormers that you can buy from the livestock places and they're all happy, healthy animals. If you feed them well, if you follow some simple rules like you would for yourself, then it works. With the worms, I mean, if they did have worms, are they evident in their food? Uh, look, I have never seen it in their food. They're going to have, every animal will have a level of worm in their system, including us. It is a, still a really important part of the system to have some level of parasite in their gut. Uh, and if they ever are not feeling well and, and you notice that, another thing you can give them is yogurt. Yogurt is, yeah, they'll get the, um, the, the right bacteria back into their systems. So milks as well, milks, yogurts, you can soak bread, grain breads preferably, because white bread's a bit like I said in white bread, it just sits in your belly and it's not much good for you, too much sugar. But uh, yeah, yogurts and milks soaked in breads or just a yogurt by itself, they love it. It's a really good treat and it's yeah, putting bacteria back into their system. That's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Look, I, I'm very fortunate to work also at Family Farm Market, so they get large amounts of greens every day. So greens are really important part of their diet. Other than that, I now use um, one of the best products you can buy on the market as far as feed is concerned. It's called Red Hen. Um, it's, it's just a very good mix of everything. It's got your grits, it's got corn, it's got lupins. It's got all of the really top quality stuff in them. If you give your chickens the best food, they're going to give you the best eggs. It's a bit like giving your dogs cheap dog food. They're going to poop a lot. <laughs> Not to say that these guys like poop a lot, because they do. Sorry, where do you buy the red hen from? Is it just farmers? You can get it, it's, it is fairly, not hard to get hold of, but it's just, sort of just get its name out there. I do have it for sale, um, but some livestock places have it for sale around the place as well. So best to just ring your local livestock store and they may actually get it in for you as well. Um, do you use that as a supplement food? Or they have that available all of the time because I'm breeding with them as well. It's really important that they have, they, that's got a, a high uh, high protein content, their minerals and vitamins in it, as well as everything else that they get. So they, they get the best because we want the best back for them. Fresh every day and that's always available. Yes, that's always available for them. Um, one of the other things that um, I do, making sure is keeping your pens clean. Keep your pens as clean as you can. Once a week would be enough if you just went in there with a rake or, or shovel, whatever you need to just to scrape out your poop. I actually have pot plants with the bottoms cut out, which I pop the poop into, allow it to sort of ferment down a little bit or rot down a little bit, and then put it onto my gardens outside. Um, it goes straight on my plants. It do, I don't have an issue with it burning my plants. It's, you know, the plants are leaping out the ground. Our gardens are all fairly new where we are at the moment. And, and if you visit out there, you see that it's it's great. It changes the, the makeup of the soil. So everything from your kitchen scrap to what they're eating to what they're putting out the other end, you're going to be using. Um, bedding material, etc. I like to make sure that we use some of this straw or, or paddock straw in their, their boxes just for them to have nice comfy nests to lay in. Nesting boxes, I use dog kennels a lot. Dog kennels. dog kennels, really, really good. You can have them put up off the ground as well. Try and use plastic if you can, because if there are any parasites or bugs around, they can't burrow or live in the, in the plastic. And it's easy for you to move, easy for you to clean. If it's wood, wood is a, you know, um, a great environment for things like mites to burrow into and live in. So you want to try and discourage that as much as you can. What size dog kennel? Oh, like they'll squeeze, yeah, I love squeeze. These girls will happily squeeze into a space like this. They like it to be secluded, uh, small area. But sometimes you can give them the best boxes and they'll go and lay in a corner of the shed behind a piece of tin. It's just wherever they've decided to go. But they will tend to go back to where other chickens are already laying. So you note that you might have three or four boxes, but they all decide to lay in the same box. Um, uh, lawnmower catches is another really good one. Old lawnmower catches because they've got a handle on them. You can ah. pick them up and move them around easily. And it's a good idea that you can move anything that you've got sat on your ground in the chicken yard because where you have chickens, you will have mice. There is that's inevitable. That's part of what goes on. Uh, if the chickens get hold of the mice, they will eat them. They are carnivorous. They will rip them to pieces. <laughs> um, frogs, that love anything like that. Frogs, mice. They tend to leave the rats alone, they're a bit too big for them to, to tackle. Um, and of course they love their slugs and bugs, etc. Right. This is a turkey, everyone, a baby turkey bolt. And he's obviously not very happy about being by himself. And does anyone want to have a hold of him if I wrap him in a towel? Yeah. <laughs> There's another parasite that seems to be fairly common in chicken yards that people don't know that they've got is stick fast flea. 
Arctic fast flea is a horrible little critter. It gets in around their eyes and their comb, areas that they can't get to and pick off. Um, and this is the only thing that I will actually use some sort of chemical, if you like, to get rid of it. Because if it gets into your yard, it has a horrible breeding cycle, it gets into the ground. It's really, really hard to get rid of. So wherever you go to buy chickens and introduce them into your yard, you should always quarantine them from your animals for at least a week first. So you can just ascertain that there is nothing going on with a new animal that you're introducing. It might come into your yard and, and upset your chickens. Uh, stick fast fleas are best treated with frontline for dogs. You buy the largest quantity in it and you drop it onto, in a chicken like this, you drop three, three drops onto their comb. This is at their freeway to their blood system through their comb. It may drip down into their eye or their beak. It will not hurt them. It's not going to kill them. Within 24 hours, it will get rid of the stick fast fleas. If you continue to treat them like you would your dog, every month for the next three months, it will get rid of the breeding cycle of that mite being in the ground. So that's, that's the most important thing. It might be gone off your animal, but all those little mites are still living in the ground and in wood in the chicken yard. So would, you, continue. would you avoid using their eggs? Um, I don't, personally. Uh, any of the dips and stuff that you can buy, you would, because they're, they're horrific. I don't know if you've ever no, come across no. them. Um, a bit like sheep dips. They smell like you're dipping your chicken in a bucket of petrol. Yes. <laughs> so in that case, definitely not. In these, no, I don't. But I guess that's something you could ask um, frontline. I, I really don't know about that. But yeah, I haven't done, and we're all still here. Okay. Uh, so with bantams, would you do less than three drops? Uh, I actually no, I don't. Yeah. It's it, if they're tiny little ones, that's when you would consider putting a lot less on them. If they're and there's my little peeking boys and girls. If you were to use them on these guys, yes, they're actually quite small. But if you ever needed to ask that question, just yeah, just on the peekings, maybe one to two drops. I'll get the little peekings out so you can have a look at them. They're lovely. <laughs> now, this little guy has got a bit of a small man syndrome going on. He thinks. He thinks he is the bee's knees and will pick on the biggest rooster in the chicken yard. But he does his job, he's looking after his girls and he's, he's, you can see even the roosters in this variety are very, very docile. Oh, uh, the, the females in this variety, she's not real happy about that. <laughs> the females in this variety are, are very docile as well, they're great kids' pets. You can just walk up and pick them up. The ladies should know they're not in your head behind us there. The good layers for you as well. Um, they're sort of average at least layers. Four a week each. Yeah, so they're still reasonable layers. It's, you know, four eggs a week is pretty good. Um, a chicken does need 14 hours of sunlight a day to lay an egg. So people will say over winter, oh, none of my chickens are laying. Well, they don't have enough sunlight to produce the egg, and it's often when they go into their molt. So they will lose their one lot of feathers and look like they've been to Chernobyl, some of them. <laughs> they look quite quite uh, scraggy for a little while until they grow the new feathers back, but they're also putting their energy into keeping warm at that time of the year. So lots of reasons for them not to lay over that winter period. So it might be two or three months when they don't don't lay, so don't fret if they, they go off the lay. Uh, but again, having different breeds of chickens, they don't all stop laying at the same time. Some of them are from much colder environments, some of them from warmer environments. So if you get a bit of a spread going on, then you'll get eggs pretty much all of the time. The only chickens that I think probably not best to mix with any others are silkies, unless you bring them up as babies with the other animals, because they are such docile, dopey creatures, more so than these guys. They tend to get bullied very much by the other chickens, and perhaps even sat on, because they're so little. He's a Sussing everyone out, he's quite happy. So, this it. one's called a peak. He's a peak in, yes, and he's, one of his girlfriends is in here. Let's see if I can get her out. So happy about me either. 
Oh, that's a female in the variety. We're just going to settle down. She's very young, so she's got a, a little bit of growing to do now. But they they are, are, are rather hilarious when they run around the place and walk around the place. They don't do much. They so kind of stand around. They won't dig around in your garden, so they are a good pet to have in your backyard. From that point of view, they won't destroy any, everything. These guys will eat everything, including the thorns off your own rose bushes. So and they'll and and then some. They'll be up at your back door trying to get in your house. They're very very nosy. These guys, yeah, you could have in your garden and they wouldn't do much damage at all. Um, in fact, they go to bed at three o'clock every day. <laughs> I don't know why, they're just, yeah, and very are precious. Good, are they good layers? I would, yeah, the lady there was saying, mine have only just started laying, so these are something new to me, but about four eggs a week. So they're still reasonable layers. They're not going to give you, yeah, six out of seven, but they're still reasonable layers. And, I mean, their eggs are much smaller than this variety here. They'd probably be you know a third of that smaller again that they lay so not a very big egg there you go as far as some of your fancier breeds go I've got here in this guy in here is called a um, Polish frizzle so you, the frizzle is actually a rogue gene in chickens that came out somewhere along the line and somebody decided that they'd have a bit of fun with it. Ah. Now this is Rod Stewart. <laughs> and doesn't he know it? <laughs> He's rather hilarious. Um, he really can't see much further than there. So we're just going to bear that in mind. You know, he, he, he does have a go at me, this guy, when I go in the chicken yard. He'll have a go at my boot because that's all he can see. But as you can see, he's not very frightening. <laughs> and when it rains, his feathers go straight. <laughs> so he had the opposite problem to the rest of us with curly hair. <laughs> How old is he? He's young. He's only about 10 months old. Yeah, he's, he's a young boy. <laughs> but the role of a rooster in a chicken yard is to look after his girls. You would be really surprised. They do trot around warning the girls if there's any danger signs, uh, rounding his girls up. He finds food and tries to entice them to come over and then takes advantage of them when they're not looking. Um, <laughs> but you know, as a general rule, they, they, are a pretty, they have got a very important role as far as looking after their girls in the yard. And they do say that the eggs that you eat from these guys with a rooster in the yard are better for you. Um, and just while we're on eggs, eggs that you produce out of your backyard are 50% lower in cholesterol. They are much better for you all round. Um, what they consider or call free range eggs in the shops is a chicken living in a shed that's a square metre by a square metre. They do not free range. It's not <coughs> Battery hens, the size of an A4 piece of paper, four chickens live on that space. Four. <laughs> so they're standing on top of each other. So just to give you a bit of an idea of yeah what they call free range and, and not. Um, yeah, he's very cute. <laughs> and actually, you know, the, the girls that he's with, the Polish and Arakana girls, the Polish and Arakana are, are a similar... Yeah, he'll, he'll shuffle in. Uh, are, are a smaller size chicken but they do still lay really good eggs. You still get like 200 eggs a year from them. And if you're lucky enough, you'll get one that lays the blue-green egg. So they have that colour gene in them. There's two or three varieties of chickens that do that. And they can be anywhere from olive green to this bluer. They say also that these eggs are 30% lower, again, in cholesterol. So they're better for you. Um, now, ducks. Ducks are fantastic pets. They are obviously a little bit more messy. You do not need a pond to keep them. A bucket of water is the most important thing for a duck. They need to be able to clean their nostrils all the time because they shovel their nose into the ground, constantly covered in dirt. Although they do love a bath. When they're very little, like these guys here, they can and will drown. Just because mum swims doesn't mean that they can swim that well. They're a bit like sponges. 
if you were to get these guys, it's always best to get them in pairs because they are really family group animals and they can fret without another duck. But if you were to raise one by yourself, it would become your shadow. It will follow you around like a dog. Um, this particular variety is the PQ. So they're the beautiful big white ducks with the orange feet and the orange bill. They can't fly. They're excellent layers. Um, and very docile. They're probably a bit shy actually of people, but if you were to raise them for this young, they're, they're very happy to be around you. The other variety of ducks I have are the muscovy. Now they're the ones that have the red growth on their face. They can fly. The males can be quite aggressive. Uh, but we use them as mothers for these guys because the Peking parents will not sit on their own eggs and will not raise their own young. They are a commercial duck, so it's been bred out of them, much like your commercial breed of chicken. It's been bred out of them to go brooding, so you, you'll rarely find uh, an isobrater or a highlight that will go brooding in your yard. Mm. Are the Peking ducks quite docile? They're very, very docile. Very docile, very dopey. I'm a bit scared. Oh, ducks, really? They no, no, of, of chickens, really. Oh, right. Oh, I'll get you up here touching ducks. them all in a minute. How do they get along? Do you have chickens and ducks? Beautifully, yeah. yeah. I have them all living together. Um, I actually have a disabled duck that lives in one of my mixed pens. He does not live with the other ducks because they pick on him. Um, don't know why he's disabled. His head, when he was born, his head was... He just, he seems to have some sort of neurological problem. So the other ducks and mother, in that case, would, would quite often kill them in, in the wild. They would not survive. But he happily lives with the chickens. Um, but they sleep in different areas? Or no, they all sleep they in all the same area. How often yeah. do the ducks lay? Every day. Every day. Yeah, the ducks lay. They're they bigger eggs. Champions. Ducks. Yeah, they can. The biggest duck ever egg I've had is 135 grams. Oh. And was a triple yoker. That's a small duck egg. Very small, that'll be a first season girl that's laid back. Um, that's they're higher in protein, is that right? Don't know about that. <laughs> Teach me that. <laughs> um, look, their eggs are, their yolks are very orange compared to a chicken. The shells are quite hard, they're more porcelain like. Um, look, we eat them fried, poached, whatever. It's the fact that we need to get our heads around it because it's a duck egg. It's no different than any other egg that you would eat. They make fantastic cakes, They're great for anything. They are really lovely eggs as well. And they don't, they do have a slightly different flavour. Uh, and the, the whites, when they're cooked, have a more dense... Um, I think it is a high protein. Yeah. that's where the, the white is. Yeah. And I think that's why they're better for cooking cakes. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're they fantastic for pavlovas and everything. Yeah, they hold their shape. Yeah, but they they live very happily with the um, with the chickens. No the at all. Ducks don't fly. No, they don't. They're too big. They're too heavy. They do have wings. But the other thing is, my muscovies have the ability to fly. They don't. If they're happily fed in a happy environment, they've got what they need. They they don't. They ducks are very family groups. So whatever you have them with, that's where they want to be. Um, Again, you would always get a funny one that might decide that she's just going to go. And I did have that happen. She just flew off and left her babies a few years ago. She just helicoptered out of there and that was the last we saw her. <laughs> you know, that does happen. But it's, it is rare. They'll stay where they're happy and where their family group are. What do they eat different than the chickens? Uh, as far as the grains, not at all. And they love their greens. Greens are, are huge for the ducks. They see me coming with the ute and I've got a queue of them waiting outside. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get in to get whatever. What scratch. greens? What greens? Are I've lettuce, cabbages, silver beet, um, all your grasses. They are broccoli leaves. Yes, they'll eat anything. Anything you've got available. So really? they'll get into your veggie patch. They will destroy your veggie patch. <laughs> <laughs> they love tomatoes. Tomatoes it seems to be a favourite with them. Um, so do you chop it up or no. just give it? No, I don't give it to them whole. They also love melon, so watermelon, rock melons. Um, and, you know, if you were to give them a watermelon, even the chickens, you'll come back and there's this perfect mm. bowl. <laughs> All that's left is this green, <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing else left. They eat the lot. Um, but, yeah, but they're, they're really good pets as well. Sorry, can I just go back to what you said mm. at the beginning about... Um, you said yes. I give them the whole lot and I do not have any adverse reactions. 
Uh, raw meats is probably the only thing that they don't like or touch. You can put it there. They tend to leave it alone. Do you give them a bit of chocolate? Yeah, absolutely. If you've got chopped bones, chopped bones, your steak bones, give them to your chickens. They will love you forever. Meat is a really important part of your diet, and you'll find that a lot of these pellets that you buy in the stock places to feed your animals, the protein is meat meal. You can buy vegetarian um, pellets and stuff, and, and they use other means of the proteins, to be nuts and seeds, etc. But in a lot of cases, it's meat meal that they've used in those foods. Uh, the other thing they do in hatcheries, and I also do, because I incubate all of my own, all my eggs are candled to see if they're developing or not. If they don't, if they're not fertile, if they don't develop, they are then fed back to the animals in the form of scrambled eggs because it's high protein. It's no different than an egg that you'd get off the shelf. <laughs> Sounds bizarre, but that's exactly what they do in all your commercial hatcheries. These are all things that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, they, they will process all dead chicks and stuff, I think, to food in these commercial hatcheries. Yes. And what about the um, health problems of ducks? Are they similar to chickens? Do they get the, the mites and the lice and the same? Mine have never had the mites and the lice, but if they were there, it would get on them. Uh, you tend to find that the animals. Like I've rescued some that have had it. They're living in appalling conditions. They're run down, they've not been fed properly. It'll be a case of, doves and pigeons are, are very big bringers of mites and diseases into your chicken yards. That's where a lot of it comes from. So if your animals are run down, they will get it. If you bring an animal into your yard, even if yours are healthy, that has it, then it will get on them as well because you've introduced that into them. Um, Ducks, as far as diseases, I haven't, I haven't had any. They can get, oh, I'll, I'll correct myself. The one thing I have had happen with my ducks is I've overfed them protein. They get something called angel wing. Their wings will go directly out because <laughs> they've been too well fed, basically. <laughs> it's no problem to them. It just looks rather odd. They've got some feathers going in wrong directions. For so that's just too high of protein. For a normal... For a suburban backyard, mm -hmm. who are the quiet chickens? So you get less complaints from neighbours. <laughs> These lot here? Your pecans are very quiet. Yeah. Um, your australorps are very quiet. Look, yeah. they, they will all make some noise when they yeah, go yeah, to lay an egg. Yeah, yeah. That's what they do. Mm. Your commercial chickens can make quite a lot of noise mm -hmm. when going to lay an egg. Um, but it's only ever during the day. Mm. So as far as quiet, yeah, you, you peak, any of your purebred lines really mm. are you quieter. Your aracanas, the ones that lay the blue-green eggs, yep. they can tend to be a little bit noisy yep. So and a little bit more flighty. There are some chickens that don't really like human contact and would rather just you leave them alone. Mm. Um, but any of these larger, the larger the breed, the more docile they tend to be, even in the male variety. Mm. Uh, yeah. Why, why else would they make noise? Because they're oh, lots of reasons. Uh, if there was a threat, yeah. if, if we get evil hawks and, and are like flying over crows coming in to pitch their eggs, the chickens will go off. The, the male will generally alert the girls. The girls will all run for cover, but they'll all stand around and make quite high sort of shrieking noises. And they do have different noises for different events, and you'll get to know that. Sorry, cat. I have I have a lot of cats in mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm. Like 13, 14 cats in just a small area. Yeah. Um, I'm over them. But um, we, I've had chickens before yeah. and they don't seem to worry them. What about ducks? The duck, if, the, if the animal's big enough, the cats are not going to bother them. It's only if the little ones that you're going to have a problem. The cats are like any other predator. Mm -hmm. They're going to pick on something that's small enough for them to come in and, and get hold of. Uh, so no, the, the ducks are fully grown, and I wouldn't bring a duck with me today because they're just their bums never stop. Yeah. <laughs> they're about that big, fully grown, lengthwise. And I'll show you some photos there. I'll put some photos up soon of what they look like. And the peaking ducks you say are quite docile. Very docile. They won't peck you. No. <laughs> <laughs> they won't chase you, they won't peck you. I think I had a nutty chicken and it didn't it does chase happen. Yeah. It does happen. Oh, and you lovely. tend to find that white chickens oh. tend to be your nutty chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. And you know, if I was to let say my ostrilops out with some of my red girls, they hang around in their colour groups. 
I don't know why. <laughs> They're obviously a little bit more intelligent than what we think. Although my partner says that's why chickens don't rule the world. They're not the most brightest animals. And when you do buy them and take them to their new yard, you will need to show them for the first week when they need to sleep. You'll need to go and push them into their, their hutch or their shed. They don't know. They're, but they will work it out after a, a, a short amount of time as well. But they are pretty doing things. <laughs> sorry, can I just ask... Sorry, it might be a silly question, but where do, they actually, where do they actually live? Like you said, in a shed or a, what do you, what's the best environment for them? So I'm just trying to get an idea of how... How to set up? Yeah. Um, look, we ha in, in some cases in the, the sheds, what we call our sheds or where their sleeping areas are, they're actually pallets. We've got some of the free wooden pallets you get around the place. I get them through my work, so we've stood them up either end, one on top some tin across the top yeah. uh, and, and we've put in some cases a small front on them so in winter they haven't got the wind or the rain coming in right. so we've got a, a full back on them but just a half front the chickens will get up into that and that's where they'll perch at night now they do say it's best to have a concrete floor under your chickens for the case of mites etc in a lot of cases i don't have that i have i rake out uh, their areas weekly they keep it clean away from poop you put builder's lime onto the ground, it will not help, oh sorry, it won't hurt the animals, it'll only help, it'll, it just helps break down any nasties in the ground, uh, it will also get rid of any diseases and stuff that, that might be sort of potentially starting to happen if you haven't happened to clean for a few weeks. So builder's lime is a good idea to, you know, so you once a month, sprinkle it onto the ground. Okay, once a month. Once a month. Yeah, you don't have to go overboard again, just um, make it part of your routine or whatever you're doing once a month and you can't, it won't burn their feet and it doesn't hurt them either. And I put it into the baby, baby pens, it doesn't hurt them either. So they need somewhere to roost, somewhere to yeah. sleep and somewhere to lay? Or do they do yes, that in the same box? yeah, it's best to try and discourage them from trying, because sometimes you'll find chickens will try and sleep in the, the nesting boxes and you don't want that because then they'll start peeking in where they're laying the eggs. And eggs are porous, they're, they're covered in hundreds, thousands of pores, so it will permeate through the egg, the, the, the eggs breathe, if you like, uh, and the older an egg gets, the more moisture it loses, so you'll note if you were to take home a fresh egg or one from your chicken yard, the yolk sits very high when you crack it out of the shell, it's very... We're sitting up really high. As it gets older, it starts to flatten out. Uh, the air sac inside starts to get a little bit larger and it starts to dry out a bit. So that's what happens with, with the pore sort of system in it. And that's how you can tell how old an egg is, how flat the yolk is when you crack it open. Um, if you're unsure if your eggs are uh, gone off or not, glass of water. If your egg floats, it's off. If it sinks, it's still okay. Do they, sorry, <laughs> do they still use shell bricks in some of them? All the, no, the red hen layer food that I use has a shell brick in it. We used to use them in our nesting boxes for the chickens. Say it, sorry? We used to use it in their nesting boxes. Oh, the shell brick? The shell brick. Oh, oh, there was a big poultry farm, but yeah. they were free range. But yeah. Because they, they, they could pick it while they were sitting laying, they could it, which is good for them. Lots of the foods these days have got it included yeah. as part of the diet. A lot of the grit that they get is also out of the sand yeah. that you have available in your yards. <coughs> so if you wanted to treat your chickens, find a little bucket of limestone sand on the side of the road and go and tip it in your chicken yard. Yeah. Or when you go down the beach, collect the cuttlefish, collect a few handfuls of the sand and put it in there. There's, there's all different size rocks and sand granules in that which grind the food in their crops <coughs> to stop you know, any bad stuff going on, also to help form their shells. Mm -hmm. um, I also give all of my chickens their eggshells back. It's an old wife's tale that if they eat mm. eggshells that they will you know, start yeah, eating their own eggs. Again, if they're fed properly, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't even attempt to do that. So you don't have to crush them up first? No. I don't know. I don't know. Do they need a stick or something to... Yeah, so in that, that house that I was talking about made with the pallets, yeah, we use sticks off, off our trees, so if you can find some local trees that have been cut down. Uh, tea trees are excellent, because they're obviously a natural... Tea trees are a natural flea repellent. Eucalyptus trees as well. 
Um, again, for the same reason, if, if you've got eucalyptus, eucalyptus trees around the place, you can pick the leaves off them and put them in their nesting boxes, in their roosting areas, on the ground. It's also a natural deterrent for fleas and mites and, and the like. They don't like it, eucalyptus tree and, and tea tree, both of the above. What about foxes? Do you get in trouble where you live? We have foxes. We have two fantastic dogs that patrol the property when they're awake. Yeah. And all of our girls, <laughs> um, all of the girls and boys are all locked into fox-proof pens. If I was to leave one out, they would be gone. And I lost one of my Australop roosters during the day um, to a fox. So they're very, very smart. So they're all the time waiting for you to make a mistake. So our yards, the, the wire, or we use tin, is all dug into the ground. Um, and the fences are six foot tall in a lot of cases where they can't get in. But foxes will climb. Try not to have anything on the outside of your yards that they could climb onto to then climb into the yards. Uh, another predator that we have a problem with are eagle hawks. And we've had to use netting over all of our other open areas to discourage them from coming in because they're like foxes. They'd come in and kill, frenzy kill, six, eight, ten chicks and just rip their heads off. And we're very cheeky, just sit there and eat them. They're so unfussed by us. You can't relocate them because if you were to relocate them, you might kill their young in the nest. And to be honest, they're just doing what comes naturally, feeding their babies. And we have a small sport of articles and they took advantage of that. But you can get netting from bunnings. It's, it's very cheap. It's a bird netting. It goes a long way. So if you can't afford to put a, um, a wire roof on, it's a really good option. It just stretches out and you can attach it to your fences just to prevent crow, because crows will, they're very smart too. Crows will come in and pinch your eggs or pinch your babies. Um, but it just helps discourage all of that. Sorry. Um, oh, you go, there you go. Oh, I was just going to ask, um, We've had chickens before and they've laid their eggs and they've not laid them where they're supposed to lay them. How do you encourage them? <laughs> yeah, really. That's my question. Golf balls? Get some golf balls and put them into their laying boxes. Okay. Because they tend to want to go back to where they think somebody else has laid before because they think the one before them has worked out that's a good place to lay them. <laughs> so leave some golf balls in there. You used to be able to get, I think, porcelain eggs or plastic eggs. I'm not sure if they're still available. But you probably could from a kitty section somewhere. Um, try some golf balls. And the other thing is, that, do they have lots of options for their laying boxes? Is that why they? Yes. Okay. Maybe take away one or two of their options, okay. and then put the golf ball in, and then see if they'll go back to their. Was that, that was your question as well. Um, partly, and the other part of it is, um, we've only had our chickens for a couple of weeks. My husband's made this magnificent chicken yeah. house, which is just perches and shells when they want to sit here or they want to go here. And they all seem to, I guess because they come from a large shed, they all just sort of clump and clump and they sit outside and warm and sleep out there. That's what they used to do. Yeah. And I think, well, why don't you go in here where it's warm? No, they, they will eventually do it if they please. Um, milk, I perhaps put, put some milk crates outside where they're sitting so they get the idea of getting up to roost. Otherwise, if you, if you go out when it's too late at night to try and put them in their house, they don't know where you've put them, so they don't know where to go back to the next night. So try and go out at nightfall and maybe shut them in your shed area uh, and put some crates there so they get used to. They will naturally want to roost and go up trees. We have some that live up trees. We've got big tea trees in the yards and we've had, you know, perches put in between the branches by my lovely partner who indulges me in all this stupidity. <laughs> Um, and they, they roost up the trees. They're very, very happy up the trees. Naturally, that's what they want to do. So they will learn to do it. How old were they when you got them? Uh, just, I guess, they're just those that, ones, I guess. Yeah. So they, they're used to sitting on the ground in, in those places they don't have anywhere to go. And they will work it out. Um, we had the plan of, we've got like a pen area where we want to put them back in at night, mm. it's all secure in the box and stuff. And we just had the idea that then during in the morning we'd let them out mm -hmm. and they can just range all around the backyard mm -hmm. all day. Because mm -hmm. we heard that they don't tend to wander off, they stay close to their territory. And then we just had the idea that 
had not fallen or dust, we put them back in. Is that you would okay? need to put them back in. The light climbing pigeons, yeah, they will they go they back. Will lock them into your, your area that you built to start with for probably a week to two weeks. Once they become familiar with that area, open the gate and start letting them out. They will go back to where they roost. Always, always. Um, if, like these guys, if you're worried that some of the lighter birds can fly quite well, these girls can't fly, unfortunately. They're just a bit too chunky for that. Um, but these guys might try and go off over feds. It is part of their nature, their nosy nature too. You can clip their wings, but you probably only ever need to do it that once until you've, they've familiarised themselves with the area that you want them to be in. They'll never go again. They will stay where they're happy. Unless a predator frightens them, then they might come and kill them. Do you need to provide nesting materials? Uh, it's always, yes. It's always good to put some straw and, and a box there for them to want to go to. They, they will go and find a nice, quiet, dark place. Uh, preferably, if they don't have that, then we might find us start laying eggs all over the ground wherever. So you yeah, always get to supply a nice little area that they can go to. Could we just go back to ducks for a minute? Mm. She wouldn't want to. So <coughs> you're right with that turkey. What do what do ducks need for sleeping and ducks will stick out in the open. They don't want to shed. You can no? give them the best places to go and sleep in. So you just I chicken wire around an area and they'll stay there. They'll stay there. They don't really want to shed. Uh, I've trained some of mine now to use kennels to lay their eggs in. But if, if I lock them into a different area, they will just drop their egg wherever they're standing. They tend to be a little bit naughty, the ducks, as far as they're laying. They also tend to bury their eggs. So <laughs> if you let them out too much, they, they dig a bit of a hollow into the ground and they cover it back up with whatever material they can find. So they might have sticks and uh, what have you, and you might find one day you've got this gold mine sitting somewhere that you didn't know about. So at night, would it be best to just put them in a little area? Lock them in at night. Yeah. They do generally lay their eggs first thing in the morning. So, um, you know, wait for them to lay their eggs, work out what time is good for you, and then let them out so you know where the eggs are and you're not having to chase them all around the place. And so Sorry, I don't want to monopolise the conversation. Um, so if they're little ducks like that, how long do they take for you to put them out in the yard? The ducks um, I like to keep under like two weeks. So it can be just as simple as a 100 watt glow, as long as it's not an energy efficient glow, because they don't put out any more. Um, we do often use outdoor spotlights, they work really well. Um, but two weeks, they're outside in the rabbit hut situation. They grow really, really quick and they're little fat balls. They are much more resilient than chicks are as far as growing and uh, being able to sustain themselves. Chicks cannot hold their body temperature and up to about six weeks old they will still be under light depending on the breed. And I don't put them out as per age, I put them out as per size of the chicken and their feathering because even in the same breed you will get a slow developer, you'll get a runt, you'll get someone that's not been able to get to the food quicker. Um, it, it really is a, a very personal thing. You've got to look at some size and, and what you think is comfortable. This time of the year is the best time of the year to be starting to get them outside a little bit sooner. Obviously, heat of summer and the worst of winter, you, you're going to have problems. It can be a bit dodgy. <laughs> The ducks, um, the, the water they drink, you still put the garlic in? Yes. And the water they clean their noses in, can you put garlic in there as well? The ducks will pick up the garlic them? and throw it out. Oh, okay. Uh, and I have, you know, the kitty paddle, paddle balls. Yeah. We have several of those around the place because they're really easily tipped out and cleaned. Yeah. Um, we also have a duck pond that's been built up high, which drains directly into our vegetable garden. So it's like liquid gold. So once a week we let the plug go in the bath yes. and that, that all drains out and do just refresh the water. Um, so you change find, the water once a week? Mm, you'll find that... Do they poo in the water? Yeah, oh yes. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm doing. They do everything in the water, sometimes including doing an egg. Really? <laughs> and you'll find that in the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's liquid gold basically. Yeah. So wherever you... And I move my plastic ones around my fruit trees so that they each get you know, a dose of, of whatever's going on. And they begin laying around the same 18 weeks? <coughs> no. Now, these commercial girls, I'm glad you asked that, will lay, they're your quick layers, because they develop quick, they've been designed to, to grow quick, 
uh, they're your quickest starting with everything. These girls may take 24 to 26 weeks before they'll give you their first egg, but it's totally dependent on the time of the year they're born and at the point at which they develop. If they happen to be 24 weeks old and you're coming into winter, you probably won't get many eggs. If they were 24 weeks at the beginning of spring, you'll, you'll get barrages of eggs. That's their best time. Uh, that's why they breed in the spring and go broody in the spring. You, that's their best time to be laying. So it really is a, a case of when you buy them to when they develop, the weather conditions, if they're stressed from being moved, that may delay them as well. Um, there's no the simple ducks, answer really. When do the ducks start laying? Sorry, the generally. ducks. The ducks will be around 24 to 26 weeks. As well. Later. Yeah. yeah. And the only difference between a male and female peking, really, the male is slightly bigger. It has uh, one or two curly tail feathers on the top of its tail. That's the only difference. Um, and the girls tend to be a little bit more chatty. So they tend to be the lab men. So if you're setting up a suburban pen, would you recommend that you actually buy chickens at different ages to start oh, up? No, How would you... Yeah, I'd recommend? actually recommend you try and get them, if you would, to, to be honest, if you're looking at pure breeds, you'd have to be looking to give them young at the six Same to eight it. week mark. Yep. And Anyone then. selling chickens of this age, you'd really want to ask why they're selling them, have a really good at the health, look at the health of them. Yep. Um, anyone that's using them like I am for breeding, there's so much work that goes into actually growing them through to this stage, you probably wouldn't want to pay what they're worth. Right, okay. Um, yes. And you know that yeah, if I can grow them through to this stage, then they would go back into our breeding program yeah. to be quite honest. So better to try and get them all at the same age if you can, yeah. and grow them through. Yep, definitely. But if you wanted to introduce New another ones. batch so that they are uh, at a different age, so you're not losing all your chickens at one one lot, how would you uh, space Stay them out? out? Yeah, um, look, you get yourself a rabbit hutch. You couldn't just pop these little ones straight in with these bigger the, ones. No, no. They will pick on them yeah um, and again if you would come out and visit you'd see that I have lots of rabbit hutches within my main pens yeah which the six week olds would live in the bigger ones become used to those and then after a few weeks I would start lifting that lid the little ones will get in and out as they please uh, and then if they're feeling threatened at all they've got somewhere to go and hide yep. so if you introduce young ones into your yard yep. always best to give them options to hide away from the big ones so that could be tin lent up against your shed it could yep. be crates up on bricks yep. places that the other ones can't get to these guys are really fast mm. that's the one thing they have over these guys okay. so if they are picking on them they will run and hide yep. Good. Mm. so you you up and to people come and have a look and see how you set up absolutely yeah okay. that's yeah <laughs> Just give me a call and you can come on out. Oakfit, uh, about 20 minutes from here. It's a Thomas Road exit from the freeway. But the other thing is wherever you go to buy chickens, if they're not happy to show you where their chickens live, if they're not happy to show you the parents, don't touch them. <laughs> because you, there's got to be a reason as to yeah. why um, you know, people are not willing to show you where they come from. Yeah. And that is really tough from my point of view because at times, I might have a messy yard. It's been raining and it's smelly. Um, I work full time as well. This is actually my hobby. Oh, goodness. Uh, so, you know, it, it is a real juggle, but it is something that I'm very passionate about and feel, uh, you know, it's something that I like doing. Yeah. Kind of fallen into it accidentally. So, I do actually incubate as well. So I incubate and I hire out incubators for schools and, and kindies and for personal situations. Uh, happy to give anyone as much advice and back up that I can in that regard. Yeah. With ducklings, can you tell whether they're male or female? No. Uh, with any of the animals, I say to people that the risk, part of the risk has to be taken by yourselves. If, if I knew that, I'd be really there. <laughs> so, um, Colvin, unfortunately, Colvin no. allows us to have ducks in the backyard, is that right? Sorry? Does Colvin, Colvin allow ducks and male ducks? I don't know that. Do I? I've got a link that doesn't say, it just says... Um, it talks about chickens only. Do you know what, it really, some of it's going to depend on your neighbours. 
Is your knife just going to be funny about it? Do, do drakes make a lot of noise like this? No, no the drakes yeah. in this particular variety make no yeah. noise. So they make a little bit of a hissy. Well. Do they wouldn't um, be a problem like roosters? Yeah, roosters. Two neighbours. No, no, they're not yeah. like roosters, the males, the ducks. The females can be a bit mouthy, yeah. but they will generally go off because there's a problem. So it might be a bird flying over, uh, a cat coming on the fence. They will let you know. You'll know that something is wrong. They'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. So the roosters only got to see the light. Sorry, it, here it says, oh, um, keeping of roosters, turkeys, geese, peacocks and peahens is not permitted. Okay, so there you go. Ducks, you're allowed. <laughs> Take the clay cord into them. But it will depend on your, your neighbours a little bit as well. Mm in the summer when it gets really hot best that you have a sprinkler somewhere close by or a hose that you can run in your chicken yard because they like to have a dirt bath and if the ground is cool um, then that gives them some sort of relief we have sprinkler systems over our whole area for that reason in summer in winter, just make sure that they've got nice, clean, warm bedding in their sheds and areas that they can go and huddle in if they're, they're feeling cold. Um, there are certain chickens that are better suited to really cold or really hot. Um, the light <coughs> Sussex chicken, which is a big white chicken, is an English chicken, so it does better in really cold situations. Um, most chickens don't like it when it gets to Particularly if they're old, it does affect them. What would you recommend in a suburban house first chicken? First type of breed? First chicken. That, uh, it depends on what you like to look for and how much work you're prepared to do. If you're wanting a first chicken that you want to start laying straight away, put yourself a highlighter and eyes brown. If you want a chicken that you want to grow, and but of course the risk is still there that you might end up with a rooster, then get these girls. I mean, these, these are a much more rewarding as far as they live for 10 years, by the way. Minimum in a, in a situation like they might be between 14. The average lifespan is four or five years. So there's a lot of comparisons to be made as far as. Um, Do they need to go to the vet? Vets know very little about chickens. There are two bird experts in here. But then I think one of them is actually Victor, the other one's on the side of the river. As a general rule, don't take a chicken to the vet unless you're really, really attached to it. It will cost you an arm and a leg and they won't know what they're doing. <laughs> it really. And the other thing is vaccination. Uh, we, as a backyard operation, are not allowed to vaccinate our chickens. Um, we're not allowed access to it. It's a bit debatable as to whether... It, it's like us getting the, the human flu shot. Those vaccinations will cover only certain strains of what is out there. Um, in commercial situations, of course, if they're living in current situations, they won't be vaccinated because if one of them gets it, they'll just go through their whole flock. So they can't afford that risk. And we're talking about thousands of chickens in the shed. Um, so it's very debatable as to whether so vaccinations do. you vaccinate do. your... Not allowed to. <laughs> Not allowed to. Um, the commercial ones are vaccinated yeah. because I work with a commercial guy. So if you like, these ones would have ended up battery hens we're actually doing some, I think, rather good, and that's getting back into people's yards so they're going to have a much better life. So in that case, those girls are vaccinated. So what is the cost of these chickens usually? As day-olds, you're looking at about $10 to $12, uh, and then generally a dollar per week older. I try not to, for the health of all the animals, hold it any longer than six to eight weeks. It's just not possible. Um, girls like this, you wouldn't, I wouldn't sell them. <laughs> they're so valuable. Uh, your commercial girl here that's about to start laying, $25. Um, and if you equate that to in five or six weeks, she would have laid as many eggs as what you bought from the shop, so she's already paid for herself. Um, so you've got to look at it as a bit of an investment. You really need to decide whether you want all the work. Oh, how many chickens are you good? You know, I mean, should you have more than one? Yes, they are family group animals, yeah. A minimum of two and, you know, five or six would be a good option for a family because you will get one that might not lay for some time or 
it might be a bit older, so you're not going to get an egg from every one of them every day. So depending on your eggs demand, of course. So then you can start supplying your family as well. Mm. But just getting back to the chicken food, um, mm. you said you put it in a, a cut off plant. Yeah. Cut off. Mm, cut out the bottom of from a, a plastic pot plant or yeah. a plastic bin. Yeah. Pile all of your rubbish into that and Straw let it. Straw and everything. Yeah, get you everything. Off and let it yeah. ferment yeah. down. You'll find it become a bit of a worm farm as well. And lid so, off. Like yeah, lid off. off. Yeah. Uh, in summer, you might want to consider putting a, a screen or something on it so it's still aerated. And don't leave it sitting in there for too long. So every two weeks, like get rid of whatever's in there, get it out in your, your yard. And, um, and native gardens? Because we've got quite a native garden. We've and got I've everything, heard. and then we put it on everything. Okay. So native fruit trees. Um, Personally, don't have an issue. It goes on everything. It doesn't burn anything that we have a problem with. Okay. Mm. With um, where they're allowed to run around, if they're running around in a flower bed with lemon trees or... Um, other trees, will they just shred them to bits if they tend to leave citrus smaller? trees alone. They don't like citrus trees. Mm -hmm. They don't like citrus either to eat, so you'll know that if you put an orange in the yard, it'll still be there <laughs> forever in a day. They don't touch the citrus leaves. There are certain plants that they tend to leave completely alone. Uh, but there are, obviously, if it tastes good, they're going to eat it. And they do know what it tastes good, and they do know what's good for them. And so they'll just pack it too. They'll oh. take it right down to nothing. <laughs> You'll go out there and think, oh, I'll take that tree away in a minute and save it. By the time you go back, it'll be completely gone. <laughs> so you just need to bear that in mind. Again, getting yourself something like plastic bins and making uh, surrounds for your trees so that they can't get to them is a good idea. If you've got something special that you want to say. <laughs> the other thing is I like to get around faces of trees and have their dirt bars and scratch because there's lots of bugs and stuff there and they like to lean up against something. So, yeah, you don't want it to, to, to damage the root section too much. What uh, herbs like rosemary and stuff? Do they shred don't touch, right, They don't touch rosemary. Um, they do like parsley. Parsley is actually really good <laughs> oh. for them. They do? You must do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's that. It's actually all the rosemary leaves are all like So I need the fresh ones? The new no, sprouts, is it? Or the whole bunch? I had a rosemary bush. Bush is doing fine, yeah. <laughs> but uh, apparently yours has got a bit of a penchant for rosemary. Yeah, they just eat everything. Lots of herbs are really good for your chickens. Uh, parsley, if they've got a bit of the snubbles, is really good. It's high in vitamin C. Uh, there's wormwood is another herb that you can buy. That's really good for your animals as well. Um, again, Google all the herbs and stuff. There's loads of information on the net about what herbs are good for wash and the way the chickens. But if you have herbs around the place, they are natural insect repellents. Your animals really ingest them and they are good for them. Um, and of course they're good for us as well. So but then they wouldn't leave anything for us. Right? No, you need to put this around. <laughs> a real crate quite often works well over the top of plants we want to save if they're not too tall because they can only get to certain parts of it and won't eat the whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll just have time for one more question, this lady over here. Sure. I want to ask you about mice. Yes. Because in the grocery you're saying you need to use baby spray. Are saying the chickens would eat them if they were holding them? There is, I don't remember, there's one bait available, isn't there, that is safe for you to use. Yeah, I can't remember. There is a bait that is safe to use around your chickens. I do not use any baits around your chickens. Um, simply because they can get secondary poisoning and it will kill your chickens. So I would not recommend using baits around them. You can get other traps that you could set which would be a much better option. Uh, in our case we have a dog that digs up the mice nest and gets rid of them quicker than um, any cat would ever do. <laughs> And the other, thing, a good dog, the other thing too is that mice come out a lot at night and the chickens are absolutely dopey at night. Yeah. They don't do anything That's when they're most active. So, oh, but if the mouse comes out in the day, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about snakes though with the mice? Uh, the snakes will come for mice. Mm. Uh, there is a, a snake uh, repeller available that I actually sell on the field of places around the place. It's based on a system of a solar light. It should happen into your ground, so it's run by solar power. It puts a vibration into the ground and it upsets the snakes because um, they, they work on vibration snakes. So it does a huge area. One, one station of this will do 625 square metres. 
Now it's a deterrent. It's not going to say that one of them is not going to find a way to get past it. Um, are they expensive to buy? I sell them for forty dollars, but they're a lot more expensive around the place. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we've had a, we had some snakes in, and I just thought I'm not willing to risk that. They don't touch my chicks, and they don't touch the eggs. They're only in for the mice um, and the water. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I mean, if you've got any other questions, I have got a website uh, that's, that's kind of up and running. Um, you're welcome to call me or email me and I'll help you with anything that you need. That's fine. What is your website? Uh, Cats Cluckers. And you've got business cards. Yes, I've got business cards. Is that okay? Okay. okay.